Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on the introduction to network devices, part one. Today we're going to be talking about layer one devices, layer two devices, and then we're going to conclude with layer three devices. There's a fair amount of information to cover, so let's go ahead and dive into this session. Of course, I'm going to begin with layer one devices. Well, before I start talking about the layer one devices, we need to talk about the open system interconnection model, the OSI model. It was developed as a way to help disparate computing systems to communicate with each other. The OSI reference model has seven layers. Layer one is the physical layer, layer two is data link, layer three is network, layer four is transport, layer five is session, layer six is presentation, and layer seven is application. We're going to be discussing the bottom three layers, layers one, two, and three today. Now, most devices do function at more than one layer of the OSI reference model. But when it comes time to determining where they fit into the model, you must first determine the highest level at which they operate because that's where they fit into the OSI model. To do that, you must know what they do and how that relates to the OSI model. And with that, let's talk about analog modems. The word modem is actually derived from a contraction of modulator, demodulator. Modems were developed to take a digital signal coming from a digital node and convert it to an analog signal, modulating the signal, and placing it on a wire. In return, it would accept an analog signal from the wire and convert it, demodulating the signal, back to a digital signal that the node can understand. Modems were developed to create a connection between network segments via the public switched telephone network using the plain old telephone system. Now modems provide for a single connection to a network and they're only concerned about the wire. And the wire resides on the physical layer, layer one of the OSI model. It doesn't care where the signal comes from, it just does its job. Then there's the hub. A hub functions as a concentrator or repeater in that it doesn't care where the signal comes from or where the signal is going, kind of like the modem. It takes an electrical signal that arrives on a port and replicates that signal out all of its other ports. A hub may have just a few ports or it may have many ports. And for a variety of reasons, the hub is not very common anymore in the modern network. So now let's move on to layer two devices. The first layer two device that we're going to talk about is the switch. A switch utilizes an application specific integrated circuit chip, an ASIC chip. The ASIC chip has specific programming that allows the switch to learn when a device is on the network and which ports it is connected to via that device's layer two MAC address. That's what makes a switch a layer two device. A switch may have just a few ports or it may have many ports, kind of like the hub. And although a switch is smarter than a hub, it can still be very simple or it can be highly complex and programmable. A switch can only communicate with local network devices. Another layer two device that we need to talk about are wireless access points, the WAP. A WAP is a specific type of network bridge that connects or bridges wireless network segments with wired network segments. The most common type of WAP bridges an 802.11 wireless network segment with an 802.3 ethernet network segment. Just like a switch, a wireless access point will only communicate with local network devices. Now let's move on to layer three devices. And first up is the multi-layer switch. A multi-layer switch provides normal layer two network switching services 
but it will also provide layer three or higher OSI model services. The most common multi-layer switch is a layer three switch. It not only utilizes an ASIC chip for switching, but that ASIC chip is also programmed to handle routing functions. This allows the device to communicate and pass data to non-local network devices. A multi-layer switch is a highly programmable and complex network device. A multi-layer switch may have just a few ports or it may have a lot of ports. They're not very common in the small office, home office network because they're really, really expensive. You're more likely to find them in an enterprise local area network. Now let's move on to the router. A router is the most common network device for connecting different networks together utilizing the OSI model's layer three logical network information. That's what makes a router a layer three device. The router uses software programming for decision making as compared to the switches use of an ASIC chip. The router uses this programming to keep track of different networks and what it considers to be the best possible route to reach those networks. A router can communicate with both local and non-local network devices. In most cases, a router will have fewer ports than a switch. Now that concludes this session on the introduction to network devices, part one. We talked about layer one devices, we talked about layer two devices, and we concluded with a couple of layer three devices. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I'm pretty certain I'll do another one.